Under the ground lies the sea, the cradle of the baby green pea plant. It is a particularly vigorous child because two halves of the seed now opening are packed with food for its baby days. Its root, full of energy, puts out other roots. And these grow hairs which extract nourishment from the soil. The young plant, at the same time, forces its way towards the light. That, by the way, took five days to photograph. Knowing they will need support, the young shoots produce thread-like tendrils which wave in all directions in the hope of finding an anchorage. These are so sensitive that when we put a single hair near them, they respond to its touch immediately. But it's very interesting to notice that the young, unsupported plants strive to avoid gripping one another. Give them a suitable object, however, and the tendrils get to work. Notice the perfect beauty of movement, combined with mechanical efficiency. Then come the flowers. Notice how they open and shut with the time of day and weather conditions, according to their ages. The lower part of the flower, and not these petals opening now, but these two wings contain the keel, which you can see in the center, and the keel produces the pollen, producing parts of the flower. The wings and the keel are very closely connected. Now let me open a wing. Inside is a projection here, which fits into a groove here in the keel. If I draw the wings down very lightly, they pull the keel with them. This movement explains the female portion of a flower. You see here the anthers, the male part of a flower which produces pollen. The female portion in the middle picks them up and passes it by means of a brush-like tip onto the visiting insect. The bee is too busy looking for honey to bother about what is happening. When the female is ready to be fertilized, this tip becomes sticky and is now able to pick up pollen brought by the insect from another flower. The flower is so shaped that it is easier for an insect to enter a little to one side, which makes certain that its body will brush against the pollen. As the summer proceeds, Mistress Bee gets tired of being continually prodded, 
and tries again and again to find other positions for getting out the honey. Until at last she succeeds. Here are pollen grains which the female pistil has picked up from the bee. We have magnified them more than 2,000 times so that you can see the thread-like tubes which they make. And here is one of the tubes which has been magnified more than 3,000 times, showing you inside the male elements necessary for fertilization. The tubes push their way through the head of the pistil and rush down into the ovary, attracted by sugar all the way down until they find the ovule which they fertilize. These ovules, in due course, will become peas. After fertilization, the ovary emerges from the relics of the dead flower and enlarging becomes the familiar pod of peas. When the pod is ripe, it splits open and the peas are so placed that they are shot by the twisting lip far and wide. This is to make certain that they will not all fall in one spot. Because one seed may fall on ground which offers no root hold. and this seed dies. While another, more lucky, starts upon its unseen work. Once more, there is a struggle of growth and endeavor. It results in the all too fleeting beauty of the flower.